All right. I think we have Coach Kelly on the line and we can get rolling right into there. Coach Kelly, are you with us? Perfect. Coach, welcome. Uh, congratulations on a great season, uh, SEC division and win, and as well as um, you know, your, your return to Orlando, where you're familiar, having been here a couple of years ago. Um, if you'd like to give an opening statement, you can go right ahead, and then we'll get into some questions. For those on the line, if you have a question, just raise your hand and we'll get right to you. We will unmute you so you can ask. And Coach, take it away. We're certainly excited about, and uh, I know our team uh, certainly is is looking forward to getting back um, on it, the winning ways. And, you know, we've lost two games. Um, you know, obviously to the number one team in the country this past weekend. Um, but again, you know, playing Purdue, a team that uh, won their side of the Big Ten. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Jeff and um, his teams play with an edge. Uh, played them when I was at Notre Dame and. Um, you know, he's got a great creative offense, um, really good uh, defensive structure, uh, and, and it'll be a great matchup between, you know, two teams that, you know, want to go out on, on a winning note. Um, we've had good years, but uh, we want them to be uh, years that, uh, you know, finish on a, on a positive note. So uh, excited about uh, being back in Orlando, um, seeing some old friends. Uh, really appreciate this opportunity to play in this game and uh, certainly against, uh, you know, a Big Ten team that's uh, so well coached by, by, by Coach Brown. Hey, Coach, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, Coach, um, you, you put this big emphasis on graduating champions and academics. This is that time of year where guys could be ineligible. Like, I guess last year there were a few for a bowl game. How, how much – you feel like uh, you guys have done a good job with that, so they have their grades in order and whatnot. And then if I could ask a second question, just, you know, in this new era when you sometimes don't know who's going to play in the bowl and, and who's not. Yeah, we'll have that all sorted out over the next 24, 48 hours. Certainly, you know, you, you don't worry about academics just one day. You know, we've been on it since we've got here. Uh, every single day has been – you know, working to uh, improve uh, who we are uh, academically and, and how we do things on a day-to-day -day basis. So this isn't just like, hey, let's, the season's over. Let's, let's worry about our guys <laughs> in the classroom. Uh, this is a, I'm in every uh, meeting every week when it comes to academics. Our, our staff is aware of that. So could there be somebody ineligible? There might be. Um, you know, we have some guys that have to continue to do some things at the end here, uh, but we've made great strides there. And, and I feel really good about the progress we've made academically uh, with our guys recognizing the value of a degree from LSU. Um, and then there's guys that um, are evaluating whether, you know, they should be playing in a bowl game or should they, you know, be working out and preparing for, you know, an all-star game or, you know, should they be preparing to, um, you know, uh, get better for a combine run. You know, look, those are all things that we'll help and counsel our guys with. And and we'll give them both sides of the story. Is it better to practice and prepare and, and work on your skill development as you kind of get ready for, you know, an East-West Shrine game or, uh, a, you know, a senior bowl? Uh, is is that better than, you know, trying to run a 40? Uh, we'll, we'll give them all that information. And then ultimately it's their choice, you know, and, and we'll support them in, in whatever choice they in fact make. Hi, Coach Kelly. Uh, first off, I just want to see what you thought of Garrett Nussmeyer's performance and, and, and how you graded it. I thought Garrett did some really good things. You know, I mean, clearly, you know, he's a guy that, uh, you know, has got a strong arm, sees the field well, um, you know, you know, fit the ball into some tight windows. Um, you know, he made some mistakes as well, which, you know, clearly, um, you know, those are areas that, that he'll have to improve on. But, you know, I think going in, uh, you know, and doing the things that, that we kind of thought he was capable of, um, I hope he leaves there, um, 
you know, in, in this experience with a lot of confidence that, that he can uh, go in and, and lead our football team to, uh, you know, championships. And, and cause that's how we felt about him, you know, and I, I think I was on record saying that we've got two really good quarterbacks and if Jaden couldn't play, we believed in Garrett, um, please go to the audio tape, uh, that, uh, we could win with Garrett, and uh, I think he he did a really nice job. There's some things we got to clean up, but um, he's a good quarterback too. Hey, Coach, um, curious, just your thoughts in a little more detail on Jeff Brom from kind of what he was at Western Kentucky to to how he's now put together a roster and, and plays offensively at Purdue. Yeah, you know, listen, I, I think he's got a national reputation as a creative play caller, and he is. Let's let's face it, he's very creative. I think he does a really good job. They're going to throw the football, and 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 they always have a big physical back, and in, in which they do again this year. Um, but they play with an edge. I mean, this is a team that you know they you know he talked about you know we're good old Purdue, and hey, you know we're going to rally. And listen, he he coaches his guys uh, and, and does a great job of of getting them ready to play physical football, um, you know, Indiana, Midwest, uh, toughness. He recruits those kind of guys. So uh, it's not just um, talk. I mean, I, I've gone against them. And they, they play physical. They play hard. Uh, and you better be ready to play for four quarters because they're going to come after you for four quarters. It's not just about pretty plays and creative play calling. And, and that happens too. But I think what makes his team – um different is is they play really hard and they play physical hey brian it's uh mike cobble hey, i was mike. just curious your memories of playing lsu in this bowl game it, i don't have the best memory so you can probably correct me if i'm wrong but i thought lsu got hosed on a goal line touchdown against the irish uh just from the other side now your thoughts on that game Oh, that that definitely was not a touchdown. No, I I, I don't think that was. Uh, and I and I and I can only see it from one perspective. So um, I was on the I was on the wrong sideline at that time. But um, what I do remember about the game uh, in particular was, from an offensive standpoint, LSU struggling offensively, um, and, and and you know LSU playing really good defense, and then making a play. Um, Notre Dame making a play down the sideline. Miles Boykin went up. Um, the ball was was I think deflected, and and he just stayed with it, made a play down the sideline, and and I think that was really the difference. You know, both teams, you know, kind of struggled on offense, and, and it was a kind of a defensive struggle, and um, made a play down the down the stretch, and and came up with the win. And it was cold. And that never happens in Orlando. It's not supposed to, right? At least that's what Steve Hogan tells me. Hi, Coach. Uh, so far, has there been any uh, timetable or, you know, any news on Jaden's ankle or what, what's the process going to be moving forward with Jaden? Yeah, he's probably going to need about a week to 10 days. Uh, so we won't practice him this Saturday. So he'll be out this week. Um, probably take it into the middle of next week before we start to even think about getting him out and around. So give him, give him plenty of time. So he's, you know, hundred percent healthy, you know, no sense of re-aggravating it, putting him in a situation where, you know, he gets back in, in, into a, you know, in and out the, of the lineup, lineup kind of situation. So, uh, you know, I think uh, Bo Lowry, our head athletic trainer, is, is looking for at least, you know, 10 days where, where he can really recover and get that thing back to 100%. Hey, Coach, everyone has the answers after the fact, obviously, but um, what, what's your opinion on when you have offensively, when you have a third and short, fourth and short, in, in the shotgun, does a running back, does he get some momentum running to the line and that helps? Or, you know, should you sneak it with the quarterback? Uh, obviously, you had the fourth and one yesterday. That was kind of a, a tough play for you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you have to have all of those things. I think, you know, we talked about, you know, a quarterback sneak in that situation. Uh, we just didn't feel like our quarterback had 
uh, done it enough as a backup. We we had not repped it enough. We didn't feel as comfortable with it in that situation. Um, we have with Jaden. We just didn't feel as, as comfortable as the play. You know, we got beat off the ball uh, flat out. Give Georgia credit. They, they were better at the line of scrimmage, and they beat – they beat us off the ball. But I, I do believe you have to have direct snap. I think you've got to get the ball out on the perimeter. I think you have to strike, not just inside, you know, all the time. You've got to have some – look, if you're going to go for it on fourth down, you're, you're not conservative anyway. So you don't have to be conservative in your play calling. You, you need to find a way to get a first down. And if they're pinching uh, and, and they're physical and they can knock you back, you, you got to think about other ways to pick up first downs as well. All right, we have a, time for a couple more questions. If you have one, please raise your hand and we will unmute you. Shay, you're on. Um, coach, I'm just curious. Uh, so often all coaches talk about the importance of bowl practices, both for the game, but also just moving into the offseason and next year. Just curious your thoughts there as you move into year two. Yeah, I think there's some uh, validity to it, uh, especially going from year one to year two. Like, well, you know, we protected some guys this year, you know, the Quincy Wiggins, um, you know, uh, Jaden Davis ran, you know, ran up. I mean, I think there's some young guys that need some work uh, that I think that this is going to be an effective first, you know, four or five practices where, where we really can lean on them and get them a lot of work. Um, and look, we're not blessed where we have, you know, so much depth. I mean, we're still in a position where we've got to build up, you know, this program through recruiting and, uh, that's that's still you know uh, a chief concern, but we do have some young players that we're anxious to see uh, in these first three or four practices in particular. Um, you know, get out there and 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 really give them a lot of work. Yeah, coach, I told you I had a terrible memory. That was the Music City Bowl. I've been told. So, oh, yeah. uh, my question. My question was simple. No disrespect to the Cheez-It Bowl, of course. Um, my question was about the scheduling, though. Because it's a later bowl, will that give you a chance maybe to catch up on some of the recruiting that you needed still to do? And, and how will you approach it, giving the guys time off for exams and then downtime? Well, it goes it goes dead. Um, I think we go dead on the, the 19th. So it really doesn't the, – the date really doesn't help us you know, any, you know, whether we played on the 30th or the second, it, there's no real, you know, advantages. Uh, you know, our situation is that we begin classes on the 17th. And so, you know, when you talk about, you know, th that means you've got to do anything, you know, early in, in January, um, you know, for visits and such. So it's, it's a really tight calendar. I mean, you know, the portal opens on Monday um, you know, decisions have to be made here, you know, quickly relative to who's going in. Um, <laughs> you're up against it with visits, you know, the amount of visits that you have. So this is going to be, you know, a very interesting couple of weeks here. You know, you're going to have to be very, um, very calculating. You're going to have to make some, some really uh, tough decisions uh, on your roster. Um, and uh, they're, they're going to be difficult ones. Um, and I think that that's, that's what these next couple of weeks are going to really look like. Brian, when it, uh, we'll sound here from the app here, when it comes to that transfer portal um, being open, what are y'all going to be looking for in terms of positions uh, when you're looking in the portal this year? Well, I mean, I, I don't want to talk about any particular positions because I think it, you know, you start then to, to, I, I kind of give away some, you know, here are our weaknesses, but here, here's what I would tell you. They got to be the right fit first. You know, they've got to recognize the value of an education from LSU. They, they've got to have the right traits. We're not just open for business. We're not just putting a, you know, a sign up saying, Hey, we're going to take whoever they got to be the right fit. I prefer that they're from the state of Louisiana. If we can find them, um, 
And then, you know, we're going to address needs based upon, you know, how that freshman class um, marries into it by, you know, the particular needs by position class. So we're not going to overload a particular position group. Um, in other words, if we've got three or four wide receivers that are freshmen coming in, you know, you may not see, you know, uh, a heavy influence in the portal in that position. We're going to develop um, based upon our freshman class, too. Um, so we're doing this, you know, at the same time um, and, and also allowing our program to be younger, too. We, we want to bring both of these along. We don't always want to be a turn it over program where we're bringing in transfers and turning the program over. So we need to grow and 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 you got to do that by recruiting freshmen and giving them the opportunity to step on the field and and develop and you can't do that if you keep bringing in freshmen at one position and then bringing a a portal guy who's got one year and and putting them in front of them right i think we have koki on the line and then we'll close out with shock afterwards Hey, Coach. Um, uh, the interesting thing with the portal this year is that there's also the second window in the spring. Um, how are you sort of trying to uh, approach the, the those two windows? And um, do you want to be more aggressive in this window so you don't have to worry as much in the next? Or are you sort of leaning on that second window as well? Well, I think everybody's got their own business plan. Um, I think how we're using it is... Um, you know, internally, the second window is much more about how our guys develop and we're giving them an opportunity to develop and do the right things, make sure that they're uh, going to class, uh, making good choices, making good decisions, um, doing it the right way in, in, in the weight room, um, developing in the manner that we expect them to. And if not, then, you know, that portal opens up in May. Coach, there's always this um, sentiment that winning a bowl game gives you momentum into the offseason and helps. Is that the case since the last two games didn't go your way? Does that put more importance on this bowl game or how do you yeah, do it? Yeah, it does when you lose your last two games. It does. Um, I, I, I think, you know, when, when you're trying to, you know, put an ending on what has been in many ways an, an outstanding season relative to – you know, inside out. I know everybody judges seasons on wins from an outside perspective, but inside out, it's been it's been really good from my perspective as the head coach. You you do want people to feel good about it from an outside in perspective, and a win would do that. Ten wins does that. It's kind of that, you know, that mark that if you can get the double digits, you know, you can kind of walk away and go, all right, everybody feels good about it. Um, season tickets are up. Everybody's feeling good. Everybody's patting themselves on the back. Um, I feel like we've done really good things internally um, and we've hit that mark, but, but definitely a win here is, is really important to everybody. All right. Thank you so much, Coach Kelly, for your time. Thank you. Thanks for being on the call. Appreciate it. Of course. For everyone else, we will be sending out a recording and transcript uh, shortly following this. Thank you for your time. If you have any more questions, you can email us at media at fcsports.com. That's media at fcsports.com. And more information will be coming in the, the next uh, hours and days. Thank you very much.